And today is Money Monday. Getting ready to hit the road for your next trip means more than just packing your bags. Many people like to make sure all of their affairs are in order before taking a long trip. And in many cases, that includes their legal documents just in case. Yeah, today we have Jamie Meredith, Senior Vice President of Heffron Tillotson, to discuss what legal documents you should have in place, whether you're going on a vacation or not. And so, Jamie, thank you as always for joining us. And first, let's talk about the core legal documents that you should have that everyone should have. Can you run through the list for us? Sure, absolutely. So I call it the trifecta of legal documents. Everybody knows about a will, and that's very, very important. But there's two other documents that are very important. One's called a power of an attorney, and the other is called advanced health care directives, which most people know as a living will. Those three documents are the minimum legal documents that everybody should have. And so, JB, what happens if you don't have them, particularly like a will, for example, like you mentioned. Right. In, in many cases, it's okay. If you're a young adult, you don't have many assets. If you have a simple situation, well, if you die without a will, you fall under what's called the intestate laws. So Pennsylvania and all the states have rules and laws that say what happens to your wealth, your money, when you die without a will. Sometimes, though, those laws are counter to what you want. People may be surprised to learn that if you die without a will and your parents are still alive, well, half of your assets go to your spouse and the other half go to your alive parents. That may, may, may make your spouse a little bit angry, but it's really important if you have a special needs child, if you have other situations, it's really, really important to make sure that your will directs your assets to go where you want them to go. Very interesting. Yeah. All right, let's talk about probate because I have heard people talking about uh, it would have to go into probate and there's a big delay. That's something that we want to try to avoid if we can, right? Well, in the state of Pennsylvania, if you have, again, a very simple estate, if you own a very complex business or something like that that takes a long time to value, well, that may be challenging. But if you have the bank accounts, a couple mutual funds, your 401k, here in Pennsylvania, probate is not a big deal. Jamie, you also mentioned uh, making sure that you have a power of attorney. I, I, I've heard of this when it comes to a will and when someone passes away, but how do you appoint one and, and what really is it? The power of attorney gives someone financial control over your assets. That could be your spouse. So again, if you were married and you become incapacitated, you may be surprised to learn that your spouse does not have access to assets in your name alone, such as your 401k, which for most of us is the largest part of our portfolio. If you get into an accident or in a coma or have a heart attack or a stroke and you are incapacitated, you still want to make sure your electricity bills are paid, your mortgage is paid. You don't want to uh, uh, miss out on those uh, l those bills coming due. And let's talk about a living will or an advanced health care directives, because if you haven't dis this way, you can make sure that your wishes are followed, right? That document not only uh, uh, avoids any confusion, but what it also does is it, uh, it, it helps your heirs, your loved ones avoid having to make a very, very challenging decision. Really good information. Absolutely. Thank you, Jamie. As always, we always appreciate you joining us. Jamie Meredith, Senior Vice President of Heffron Tillotson. He is also co-host of Your Money and You weekday mornings at 6.50 a.m. and Sundays from 9 to 11 on KDKA Radio. And our thanks to Heffron Tillotson for sponsoring today's Money Monday segment.